Of course, the title of this message this morning is, We Brought the Numbers Down, God Did Not Do That. And I'm sure you people that are watching or hearing this message out here on, the, on, the, on this area, you know where I'm going with this. Let's go to the book of Acts chapter 12. If you got your Bibles, go to the book of Acts chapter 12, verse 23. Let's start reading on verse 21. Those who are watching through social media, God bless you. When you watch this message, when you listen to this message now, or you're watching in the future, blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We continue praying for our brothers and sisters over there in, uh, in uh, Missouri. Missouri, uh, over there. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Book of Acts chapter 12, verse 21 to 23. And... Uh, before that, let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30. And that one says, Those who honor me, I will honor them. That's what 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30. Now let's read Acts 12, verse 21 to 23. And upon a set day, the day came, when the governor Herod dressed himself in a royal apparel and set upon his throne, and made an oration, a speech unto them. And the people gave a shouting, saying, This is the voice of God, and not of men. And immediately an angel of the Lord killed him, because he gave not God the glory, and he was eating of worms, and gave up the ghost. Mm -hmm. Let's read it again. And upon a set day, the governor of New York set up, dressed himself, I'm sorry, the governor of the Rome Empire set up and set his throne and gave a speech. He set up his press conference. His mm -hmm. governor set up his press conference <clears throat> and he started speaking. You know, we all need God. Before I go there, I'm going to tell you this. We all need God. Rich, poor, uh, tall, short, Americans, Hindus, Hispanics, fat and skinny, we all need the Lord God Almighty. It doesn't matter who you are, politicians, kings, kings of these worlds, whoever it is out there, you need God, whatever you want it or not. And these empires of these uh, uh, governors of the Roman Empire, if you remember the scripture talks about they did not want to share with them uh, their, their glory in, in a way they have some glory and respect where people will respect these governors out of fear uh, and these governors will be, they're considered gods in the Roman Empire. So King Herod comes over here and he set up his press conference and he dressed himself in the apparel of the governor of the state of Whatever state he was the governor of the Roman Empire, he set up his press conference and he started speaking. Remember, these governors were considered gods. They were very eloquent. They were very eloquent to the way to, that they can persuade the multitudes one way or another and convince them to vote for them and to put them in, in places of power. And that's what the Bible said, the book, the book of the book of the, uh, Corinthians, I believe, the Apostle Paul says, uh, we do not preach with eloquent words, but we preach with wisdom from above. That's what the Apostle Paul Amen. said. The Bible says that he made us new uh, ministers, ministers, of ministers, he made, he made us new ministers of the new covenant, not of the leather, because the leather kill it, but of the spirit, because the spirit giveth life. All right? So we don't, we don't speak with the wisdom of men, with the wisdom of Harvard, with the wisdom of, of UNC Chapel in North Carolina. We speak with the wisdom of God Almighty. So this governor, King Herod, was speaking good in front of this multitude. He will promise things to the multitude. And some occasion, these governors will deliver to the multitude things that they wanted as long as it was not a conflict. For them and their power. Remember Pontius Pilate did it too. He went ahead and washed his hands. When the multitude was shouting. Give us Barabbas. Give us Barabbas. Then Pontius Pilate said. Okay I will give you Barabbas. And I'm going to wash my hands. Of this the blood of this innocent man. Jesus he's a just man. He's innocent. And I will crucify this man. And I will give you Barabbas. Because that was going to make you happy. And that's what this governor did on that occasion. Instead of, of saving the life of the Lord Jesus. 
Jesus Christ, he gave them what they wanted, which was sin, which is Barabbas. The people was paralyzed. When they were here, these men speak. The Bible says in verse chapter uh, on verse 22, to the point that the people who were listening to King Herod, they were saying, wow, that is the voice of an angel. It's an angel. It's a deity talking to us. They were so deceived. And, the, and, the, and King Herod liked that. He liked to hear that he was a good and eloquent speaker. He liked to hear that he was doing good with his speech. So he sat on his throne and he continued on his press conference delivering this speech. And the Bible says in verse 23, Immediately the angel of the Lord killed him because he gave not God the glory. You know, the people are saying, wow, you look like a God. Wow, you, I speak like an angel. Right there, he should have said immediately, no, I'm not God. I'm not an angel. I'm just a mortal man, just like you people are. And I fear the Lord God Almighty. But no, he liked the attention. He liked the fact that people were praising him and were exalting him and put him on the pedestal. And he loved that attention. And for that, God killed him. Psalm 29, verse 2. Give unto the Lord the glory. Do unto his name. The glory belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. And the same thing is going to happen to the governor of New York. God could kill him. He's the one who came out this week with that stupid, foolish statement saying it was not God. It was not God that, that, that dropped the curve of this COVID-19. It was not faith. It was us, he said. We did it, he said. You're a fool. What's your name? Kumu? Kamu? Kama? It doesn't matter what your name is because the name that is above me name is the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Huh? Yeah. God yeah. did not do it, did it, he says. Mm -hmm. Faith did not do it. Yes, faith did it. Yes. God did it. There's still a remnant in America that has been on their knees praying and fasting and, and claiming and asking the God of the Bible to stop this, 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 this pestilence. Yes. It is not your ventilators. It is not your FEMA uh, uh, productions. It is not your hospitals. Blessed be the name of the Lord for doctors and nurses that are working hard. But it's not your efforts, Governor of New York. It was the hand of God Almighty who says, enough! No, he turns around and says, God did not do it, do it. And all the wicked devils that hate God, they praise this man and say, yes, yes, we want Barabbas. Yes, we want Barabbas. Kill Jesus. More abortions. More sin. Huh? And they respond to this imbecile, fool, governor of New York. Lamentations chapter 3, Lamentations chapter 3, verse 37. This is what it says. Who is he that says, and it comes to pass when the Lord commanded not? In other words, no one can do anything without the Lord's approval. Amen. No one. That includes the president of America, the governor of New York, the governor of Wisconsin, the governor of Arizona, anybody. You cannot do nothing without the Lord's approval. Hebrews 10.31, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. I do not want to be the governor of New York and right now. If he dies, he's, 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 he has a great torment in hell waiting for him. Psalm 14, the fool, the governor of New York has said on his heart, there is no God. There is no God. And all the people that voted for him, that put him in those places, that's why Christians got to stay away from voting. You got to be after your father's business, which is the kingdom of heaven. God has the control of everything in his hands. God is the one who killed it and gave it life. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39, the song of Moses. He's the, he says right there, I, God, the one who killed it, and I, the one who gave it life. We have an example. Now there's nothing new under the sun. 2 Samuel, let's go to 2 Samuel, uh, chapter 24. 2 Samuel, chapter 24. I'm going to show this uh, imbecile 
governor of New York, that God has the control of everything. God already sent a pestilence like COVID-19 to this world once. It's right here on the Bible, 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 15 and 16. So the Lord sent COVID-19, so the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel from the morning even to the time appointed. And there died of people from Deben to Beersheba, 70,000. 70,000 people died of this pestilence that the Lord sent. And when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to kill the citizens of Jerusalem, to destroy, the Lord repented him of the evil. And he said to the angel, that destroy the people. He said, it's enough. Remove thy hand. It's enough. No, but the governor of New York comes out and says, we did it. It was not God. It was not faith. We did it. Your ventilators can do nothing. Your hospitals can do nothing without the blessing of God Almighty. God is the one who's saying over New York, it is enough. God is the one who's saying over the world and over America, it's enough. He knows when the killings are going to stop. He knows when the cure is going to come. When he, when he said, it's enough. And they projected this curve that it was going to kill 100,000 and 250,000. But God is saying, it's enough. And these wicked devils are saying, we did it. Can do nothing without the blessing of the Lord God Almighty. God ordered this angel right here on verse 16. He said, stop the killing. It's enough. The waves, the oceans, the winds, animals, the whole entire creation obey God. Everything was created by him and for him. Another occasion, another king, another governor. Daniel, let's go to Daniel chapter 4. Daniel chapter 4, verse 30. In 30, 32, and you know the story, King Nebuchadnezzar builds, uh, with the blessing of God, builds Babylon, a great city. But he gets puffed up. He gets prideful. And pride comes before destruction. Bible says he gave grace unto the humble, but he rejected the price. He refused the, 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 the pride. Huh? So verse, verse Daniel 4, verse 30. Let's start at verse 29. And at the end of the 12 months, he walked in the palace of the king of Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar was walking on his palace. And the king, and the king spoke. Then he started speaking. See, the king, the governor, started giving a speech. He called for a press conference again. And he said, it is not great Babylon. Is this not Babylon? Is this not New York great that I had built for the house of the kingdom by the mighty of the power and of the honor of my majesty, is this not Babylon great that I have built with my hand, with my power, with my wisdom, with my majesty? He's boasting about himself. He's forgetting about God, the God of the Bible, giving him the glory and honor. And he said, no, look at Babylon. Look at New York. I have built this state. I have created this. I have passed this law. I have removed this. I have done this. I, 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 I. That's what you're going to say in hell when you're burning. I, I, I. Burning in hell. Bible says in verse 31, while the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven. See, he's not even finished with his press conference, King Nebuchadnezzar. He's not even finished giving his wicked speech. He's boasting about himself when a voice from heaven comes down and says, Oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from you. I'm removing the kingdom from you. You're no longer going to have this kingdom anymore. Verse 32, this is the punishment that God gave to this wicked governor, to this boastful, prideful man. On his, he didn't even, was not even finished with his press conference, and he says, And they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass with the oxen, and seven years, seven times shall pass over thee, until thou know that the Most High ruler in the kingdom of men, and give it to whosoever he will. He sent King Nebuchadnezzar for seven years to eat grass 
and to live in the stables with the donkeys and with the cows and with the chickens and with the horses. And for seven years, the hair of King Nebuchadnezzar grow like eagle. He did not bathe. He was not clean. He did not talk like a human. He did not spoke like a man. He was talking and acting like an animal. Why? Because he did not give the glory and honor unto the Lord and God of the Bible. Jesus Christ is his name. Two examples of two authorities, two people who were put in power and did not give the glory and honor to the God of the Bible. One of them, God smite him right away and kill him on Acts chapter 12. Here on Daniel chapter 4, King Nebuchadnezzar said, Oh, look at Babylon. Ha! Look at this great state. Oh, we did it. God did not do it. Faith did not do it. We did it. No, God did it. God's in the midst of everything. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord are everywhere, keeping an eye on the wicked and on the good. Man, he forgot about God. Verse 31, he was not even thinking and speaking when God gave him to remove the kingdom and sent him to eat grass. Corhas, and to be living with the animals. Jude, book of Jude, chapter 1, 21 chapter there, verse 25. This is what it says at the very last chapter, the very end of the chapter. Now remember, the one who writes this book is half brother, is Jesus Christ, half brother. To the only wise God, our Savior, be the glory and majesty, dominion and power, born now and ever. Amen. 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 The glory, the honor, and the majesty, dominion, power belongs to God Almighty. He did it. You didn't do nothing. You can do nothing without the Lord. Bible says in everything, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, in everything, no matter what you eat, no matter what you drink, in everything you do, give honor and glory unto the Lord Jesus Christ on everything. Romans eleven thirty six. to Him be the glory forever. In everything, give thanks unto the Lord. In the smallest thing, in the biggest things, when the Lord gives and when the Lord takes away, give honor and give credit to the Lord God Almighty. I have a small example right here. I remember when I was working at the furniture store. Uh, in other locations, other places too. I don't, I, I don't know how I can do a lot of this thing. Oh, I know how. Because God gave me the wisdom. Because I give God the glory. And I remember my co-workers will come and ask me, how do you learn how to do this? And I'll reply and say to them, in the kingdom of heaven. The next week, they will watch me do something else that I, I myself never done it before too. But I find a way through the wisdom that comes through God. And my co-workers will come and ask me, Edgar, how did you, where did you learn how to do this? And I say, in the kingdom of heaven. Giving honor and glory to the God of the Bible. The most high God. He's the one who deserves the glory. The most high God. So the, the message is that. Today, a wicked man this week came out and said, it was not God, it was not faith, we did it. You can do nothing. You're an imbecile if you think you can do something without the Lord. Governor of New York and the people of New York of America repent and believe the gospel. Give God the glory. Give God the glory. Huh? He can call you. He can command you to turn into animal, to turn into something. He can even kill you. The worst thing is kill you. And you will be in eternity, suffering, torments. So the Bible, is, the, the message is short today, but I hope I went straight to the point and I show you examples from the Bible. In the book of Acts, when a wicked governor, a wicked politician, decided not to give the glory and honor to the Lord Jesus Christ, God killed him right there. On the book of Daniel, chapter 4, verse 30, when King Nebuchadnezzar started boasting about himself and saying, we did it, we did it, and forgets about his God, and they forgets about God, the God of the Bible, who allows him to be in that position and don't give him credit, God, before he even finished with his press conference, called him to the donkeys and to the, and to the stable to live there for seven years. 
and you wonder why you live like an animal and you wonder why nothing goes right goes goes right because you don't honor you don't acknowledge that God is the one who puts you in the positions that you are you don't acknowledge and you don't give God the glory and everything you do give God the glory everything everything right now we see more people turning to God and more receptive to listen to the word of God right now, out of desperation, out of fear. They don't want to lose their houses. They don't want to lose their, their possessions. They don't want to lose their lives. And they know there's no solution. The solution don't come from the government. The government can do nothing for you. The only one that can change your situation and your life forever and ever and ever is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So America turned back to God with all fasting, crying, and supplication. If you're watching, if you're listening to this message right there, right where you are in your house, repent of your sins, get in your prayer closet and ask God for forgiveness. Acknowledge that you're a sinner and ask God to come into your life, to change your life. Ask God that you want him to be the master of your life. If Jesus is, if Jesus is not your master right now, then who is your master? Who is your master? Hmm? So that's the message. Father God, we come before you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, Lord, we love and we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your word that teaches all things. We thank you, Lord, for your word that allows to see that you have created, everything is created for you and by you, Lord. Even the waves, the oceans, the winds, the mountains, the animals obey you and command you. And nothing happened on this world without you giving approval, Lord. All the honor, all the glory belongs to you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah.